Hello everyone and welcome to part two in our widget keypad door mini series. In the first part, we went through the process of creating the UI element for our keypad, which is looking like this. And we set up all our call events and so forth and event dispatches to be able to uh, talk about talk between different actors and widgets about what's happening with button pushes and codes being entered. So now we've got the, all the setup done for our keypad. What we need to do is now attach that keypad to a door. So I've got my door here. I'm going to open up my door actor. And I'll go to the viewport. Now in the viewport, we're going to add the widget. Like so. And we'll call this one keypad widget. And with it selected, you can go to the right hand side and change the widget class to be your keypad UI. Now it will be big. So we need to do a couple of things. So first of all, just say draw at desired size, tick that, and that will draw it in the correct proportions. Next, we're going to rescale this down massively. So let's scale this down all the way. And we're going to change the scale here to something really small. Okay, and we just want to rotate and position that to where you want it to be. Try and make it as flush as possible to give the illusion that it belongs to the world. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll leave it like that. Cool. So there's our keypad on the door. So if I click compile and go into my world, you should see it there being proudly displayed. Now it also says zero, but that pre-construct will kick in when we start playing the game and it'll change all the digits to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I click on it and shoot at it or whatever else, nothing will happen. So we need to set up a few things here to make these buttons work. So the first we need to do is add a widget interactor to our player character. So find your player character. And here I'm using the first person blueprint. So in here, in my viewport, I'm going to add a widget interaction. So go widget interaction. And this thing will be attached to the camera. So drag it so it's attached to the camera. And we'll just position that into the position of the camera there. Okay. Click compile. And what we're going to do is just show debug for now. So go over to the right hand side and choose show debug. Uh, so just so we're testing it. There's a lot more we need to do to this, but we'll do that in the next part after this. So click compile and play the game. And you should see an arrow pointing, sticking out of the game. And when I walk up to something, you see, like a widget, you can see that little red ball appear at the end. Okay. So that shows you where you can interact with a widget, okay? Uh, it doesn't do nothing yet if I click. We have to set the all that up, but that's by and large the gist of it, okay? So I'm going to come out of there and go back to my first person character. So to make it so our mouse clicks can be registered with the widget interaction, we need to send that over to a event. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to create an event here or right mouse button. And when the mouse right button is pushed, we want it to do various things. So we're going to go up here and do pressed, uh, not pressed, press pointer key. There we go. So we're going to do press pointer key. And that will use a widget interaction to tell it to detect and act like a left click has happened. Well, any key here. I'm just going to make this look like a left click. Now at the moment we're doing this with just the mouse, right mouse button, but we will in the next part go through how to do it with the left mouse button as we need to shoot when we're not looking at it so forth. So on release, we can do release, pointer key, and that'd be a left click again, left mouse button, like so. If we don't need two of these, I can just hook up one and it'll work just fine. So a right mouse button will tell the widget that we're left mouse button clicking. So this is something to how you want to make like buttons on the, on the gamepad act like triggers. That's one way around it as well. So at the moment, if I right mouse button, I'd be able to click on these things. Obviously, we haven't told it to do anything yet, but 
uh, ears clicking on them. I can test this out and show you by going to my button here and on the button here, I just do print string and click compile. And when I right mouse button click on it, it'll act like a left click has happened on that button. So it will now print hello on all these buttons here. Okay. So to make it so it shows what number has been pushed, what I'm going to do is go back into my gamepad uh, UI because it's changing the value, but we need to tie our current code variable to this variable, uh, this value up here. So click on your text for that, and we're going to take it, make it is variable, and change the name of it to code text. With that now ticked, we can go to our graph. And we're going to just put it before we call the code entered uh, event dispatcher. So before we do this length testing, we're going to just drag that along here. And we're going to drag the code text out and choose get. And from there, we're going to set text. And the text is going to be just this current code dragged into it. Setting the rest up to the branch. So when I compile that now, and go back to the game. Oh, actually, let's just delete that print string. We don't need it now. Compile that. Go back to the game. Now, when I right click on these buttons now, you'll see it now just add values to this thing. And you can see it get a bit extreme because we don't tell it to reset at all. So, what we need to do is do the check for the code. So, once we've got a length of four or more, uh, if length is, sorry, that's the wrong one, it's greater than four. If length is greater than or equal to four, um, it's going to call this call code entered. So what we need to do is on our door, we need to bind that call to something else. So go to your door. And what I'm going to do is on the begin play of this, begin play, we're going to do the binding of that. So... From here, we're going to drag our keypad widget out and we're going to get user widget. You want user widget object and I'll get the actual widget that this component is using. And we're going to cast that to our keypad button, no keypad UI widget. So from there, we're going to promote that to a variable. So we've got reference to it. So keypad. UI and then from there we're going to find code entered and the code entered event is going to be our function so I'm going to go into my functions here and we're going to do check code and the check code has to match the same values that we uh, variables that we have on our event dispatcher which is here so if I find my event dispatcher there, we need a string and we need a keypad UI variable. So on my door here, check code, it's going to have two variables. First one is going to be the string for the code entered. And the next one is going to be keypad UI. And it could be a type of keypad UI. Click compile. The next thing this needs is a variable. So we need another variable for the correct code. And this will be the code that is required to open the door. With it selected, change it to a string and make it editable. Click compile and we're done there. So on check code, we need to check whether code entered equals correct code. So that's the first thing. So check entered equals equals and plug in our correct code is the bottom value. And this will output true or false as a Boolean. Okay, so if it's true, what we're gonna do is tell the keypad UI to reset and also unlock the door. So if it's true, drag is locked and set that to be false. And we need to also call our open door event. After that, we're going to reset the current correct code here to the uh, blank value. So type in keypad UI, and you'll see get uh, keypad 
would be oh, it doesn't have name the same thing but I think it's this one so this one would be this here okay also alternatively you can just drag the pin right across but I don't like dragging pins right across like that makes it hard to read so from that we're going to uh, I guess it doesn't really matter which one you got you can use either so from there we need to just set current code to blank okay if it's false i.e the code entered is not correct we want to make sure we play the uh, first of all lock door function which does the little flashing lights and warning messages and then we're going to call this same thing here to set the correct uh, the current code to nothing and click compile and go back to your event graph so now we've got that function set up we can now link it to our uh, event dispatcher to link it we drag from the event and we do create event and we're going to choose a function and hopefully your check code should appear if it doesn't appear it means your variables don't match so double check those select that one and click compile so now it will check the code with the door so I've go back to my game click on my door and now I can see what code I want to enter it so I'm going to go one two three four pretty standard hit play and go up to my keypad and enter the code one two three four ah it's not working it's resetting it every single time so what I need to do is go back to my keypad UI and here, ah, that's where I went wrong. I didn't change this to four in my check for length. Hit play, now do it. One, two, three, four, and the door opens. Now the widget has stayed there. That's because I forgot to attach it to the door. Silly me. So I'm going back to my door, grab my keypad widget and just drag it onto my door mesh. So now it's attached to it, so when it moves, the widget will move with it. So one, two, three, four. And there you go. And now that door is unlocked, so if I push E, it will open every single time. And there you go. And if I were to push more numbers, it will reset back to another one, and it will flash to say wrong code. But I've already unlocked it, so I can just open it back up. Thanks for watching. In part three, we're going to work on fixing our left click. So our left click it will interact with the buttons rather than a right click. And we'll make it so it doesn't shoot at the keypad rather than it will detect that we're looking at a keypad. Um, then we're also going to fix our widget interaction line here. So it actually points to the crosshair no matter what distance you are at the crosshair um, rather than just a dead straight line out. If you want to watch that part three right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryanaley. A donation of simply just one dollar will get access to that video plus many others. Thank you to all my supporters so far on Patreon and YouTube members. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you do. So make sure you don't miss out on any content. New content is released every week and live streams are every weekend too. Thank you very much and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.